How was I? Not bad this evening. Yeah? Good. Good evening, everybody. Okay, we'll probably have a little bit of uh, tear it down a bit. Is that, is that right? Yeah? Is that okay? Start again. Good evening, everybody. Uh, and it's lovely to see you all. Uh, and it's lovely to be back here uh, on the platform. Um, our cattles by candlelight. Uh, and we trust that uh, you'll have a, a blessed evening uh, of singing and reflection. I want to thank the, uh, the young ones, uh, our young people, for taking part. Because it was a question of ringing up their parents and asking them, would it be all right? And they, the parents said, yeah, for you. No problems there, you know. Okay, so we'll drop the, the readings off and they've all turned up, I'm happy to say, which is really good. And also I'd like to thank Alan uh, for coming to join us this evening, especially, and, and for playing for us. Yeah, good, excellent. And uh, especially more so because he's of an age now, isn't he? You know, a birthday in the week? Yes, yeah, yeah. 21, that's fine. Alan's 21, uh, on, or he was on Wednesday, which was uh, lovely. Yeah. It was suggested that I start the happy birthday song off, but I'll, you know. <laughs> I can't even know, okay. <laughs> um, just a bit more housekeeping. Um, the, if, if there is a fire, I'll be the first out. So follow me through the doors. This back vestry door is open and just go over onto the, uh, onto the car park there. We're not going to have a drill. So if you see me move rather fast, that's what's going to happen, okay? Um, and also afterwards, join us for mince pie and, and a cup of tea and a, and a chat. Um, I think that's all there, yeah? And thank you for Harry uh, and Tim and Brian back there on the, the desk. Uh, I know that they do bits and pieces and the, you know, now and again the, the sound might go or whatever. Very technical, but thank you anyway. Uh, it is appreciated. Um, so that's the housekeeping. Now it's all down to you. I'm going to open it in prayer. So some deep breaths while I pray. Get, fill your lungs, okay? And this is our one evening when we get together to sing carols and remember the Lord. Let's open with a word of prayer. Our Father God, we would thank you for our time together. We thank you, Father, for this particular time of the year. Lord, when we remember uh, your birth. We ask you, Father God, that it will not be uh, all tinsel and fir trees and baubles, Lord, but it will be about you. It will be about the birth of our Saviour, the Lord Jesus. We ask you, Father God, that you will bless all that's going to happen this evening, Lord, from the readings to the singing, and when Amos comes and speaks to us uh, to deliver a short message. We ask you, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit will be here and with us. Bless those, Lord, that will be watching this on YouTube, and we trust, Father God, that they will be blessed uh, as much as we are here. We ask you, Lord, now that you will accept of our praise, our thanks, for we ask it in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, when I get down, our uh, first reader will, will uh, come up and read, and then after that it will just flow. So next time you see me, if I've not gone through the door, I'll close in prayer. Okay? Thank you, folks. Thanks. This reading is taken from John chapter 1, verses 1 to 5 and 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth.
this is the saviour of the world. Some regard the Christmas story as something beautiful to hear, a lovely Christmas custom that we celebrate each year. But it is more than just a story told to make our hearts rejoice. It's our Father up in heaven, speaking through the Christ child's voice, telling us of heavenly kingdoms that he, prepared, that he has prepared above for those who put their trust in his mercy and his love. And only through the Christ child can man be born again, for God sent the baby Jesus as the saviour of all men. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Isaiah chapter 9 verses 6 and 7. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign upon David's throne and over his kingdoms, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. The birth of Jesus foretold. 
In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, to a town called Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you, are, uh, you who are highly favoured, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favour with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How would this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her.
He was one of us. He was born as little children are and lived as children do. So remember that the Saviour was once a child like you. And remember that he live on, lived on earth in the midst of sinful men. And the problems of the present existed even then. He was ridiculed and laughed at in the same heartbreaking way that we who fight for justice are ridiculed today. And in the end, he was betrayed and even crucified. For he was truly one of us. He lived on earth and died. So do not heed the skeptics who are often heard to say, what does God up in heaven know of things we face today? For our Father up in heaven is very much aware of our failures and shortcomings and the burdens that we bear. So whenever you are troubled, put your problems in God's hand, for he has faced all problems and he will understand. This reading is from Micah and Luke. But you, Bethlehem Ephrata, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel. Those origins are from of old, from ancient times. The birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken over the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to see Mary to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn.
This is Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flock at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for you and all the people. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be assigned you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and laying in a manger. Suddenly, a great companion of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth to men on whom the, his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was laying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word of concerning what had been told about his child. And all who heard it were amazed and what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told.
Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all of Jerusalem with him. When he called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I may go and worship him. After they heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by a different route.
Good evening, everyone. And it's good to see you all, and it's good to be singing to that uh, uh, special name, that precious name, that name that uh, Evans and have rejoiced about. And I'm going to do some reflection on the essence or the significance of this season. And I believe that for many of us, this will not be the first time that we've been at a carol service. So why do we come together? Why do we look more again at that name, Jesus? And I'm going to be looking at the question, what is in a name? In the part of the world where I was born and where I grew up, names are quite, quite important. When a child is born, the child is given several names by family members and all of them will think about maybe the circumstances surrounding the birth of the child, or they might think of the kind of future they are hoping for the child. And as a result of that, they will find a name that has that kind of connotation. And so the child goes through the names after they are grown up a little bit, and then they begin to see how each of those names actually relates to their own life, their own experiences, and things like that. And I believe it's very similar in most uh, cultures in different parts of the world. So names are important, they're not just given frivolously. So everybody makes a recourse to the name that they have been given. Now, in, in the case of Jesus Christ, he wasn't given that name by his parents. The name was actually given by God. So the name was an instruction, a command from above that he was going to be given the name Jesus Christ. And I will read from Matthew chapter 1, uh, when the angel came to Joseph in a dream uh, about the night, and the angel spoke to him as a servant uh, from God. Mark, I mean, Matthew chapter 1 from verse 21. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. So unlike us who are given names by our parents, the name Jesus was actually given by God. So it's a divine name. God said we are going to call his name Jesus. In the original uh, Hebrew is Yeshua or Yeshua, but in the Greek is called Jesus. But then it goes on to explain what the meaning of that name or the implications of the name, what they were. You are going to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. So if you read the name Jesus, you are not yet ended until you have understood the meaning or the significance of the name. The name is Jesus because he is going to save his people from their sins. And if you read further, it says all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Now the first thing I want us to see from this passage is we're dealing with a God who has a master plan. Now God planned everything meticulously about Jesus. And prophets spoke. Some of these things were said in, I mean, were sung in the songs that we, we had that some prophets like Isaiah, 700 years, even before Jesus Christ was born, they were predicting, prophesying, I will use that word, about the different aspects of the life of Jesus, right from inception, right from the birth, all the way to when he was going to die and he was going to resurrect. So God planned everything meticulously. I want to uh, emphasize that God has a plan not only for our world, but for you. God has a plan for you. And God's plans can never be thwarted. The Bible says he is the first and the last. He is the alpha and the omega. So he is the one that covers everything right from the beginning to the end. So he doesn't struggle to understand because he knows all things. You know, we are trying to understand what will happen in the future. We never knew, for example, that COVID was going to be here. But God wasn't taken uh, by surprise. And so God has a plan. That master plan is going to be fulfilled at the appointed time, which is called the Kairos of God. Therefore, it is important 
that we men who live on earth, men and women, I mean, we are just in God's divine plan, acting things out. So if you let God be the master of your life, God has a plan that he is going to fulfill at the different points as he has planned it. And it is also instructive for our world to know that heaven is not just obeying, I mean, what the earth is saying. He is the one who rules in the affairs of men. So we go back to the name Jesus, knowing that God had a plan and he began to fulfill all of that plan in very fine details, including the name that the child was going to be called, the place where he was going to be called. And we see that God says that he is going to save his people from their sins. Now, I know that we're going to have festivities, and that's good. That's, there's nothing wrong in that. You know, feasting, there's nothing wrong in, in that. But what would be wrong for us not to do is not to consider the essence, the core of the season, the significance of what we are doing, which is about Jesus, and which is about people getting saved from their sins. So what is it about sins? Why is it so important to God that he will send his only begotten to save his people from their sins? That means that the ultimate problem is the problem of sin. And it dates back to when Adam and Eve sinned. And because of that, they lost the glory of God. They lost a, a perfect hearth. And so sin came in and all the consequences of sin and today, we think about pain, we think about sufferings, we think about deprivations, poverty, sickness, wars, conflicts, depression, hatred, jealousy, disappointments, dejection, anything that is not that good that our world is subject to actually connects back to the problem of sin. So God didn't intend that we were going to be having to go through all of this, but it was our fault that we disappointed God. But God in Jesus brings restoration. He brings restoration by bringing Jesus, who is going to save his people from their sins, which led to all of the consequences that we see playing out today. And so why did God do that? He didn't do it for fun. He did it so that all of us will realize what he's trying to do, trying to bring us back to the glory that we lost, trying to bring all of humanity back to himself. And so it's only in Jesus that that restoration is possible. And so God wants all men to come to Jesus, to the knowledge of Jesus as Savior, and that is the only guarantee by which the redemption can happen. And as I close, it's not just the birth of Jesus some 2,000 years ago. Remember, God has a master plan. That plan goes beyond the current times. It goes into the future when God is going to give us a new heaven and a new earth. God has a plan. Remember I said, God's plan cannot be frustrated. We may have governments of nations deciding what they want to do, but it is the Lord who calls the shots. And when the time is over, God is going to draw a curtain upon the current earth because he has a plan. But it is only those people who have been redeemed through Jesus who was sent to save all of us from our sins that we'll be able to partake with God when that new heaven and when that new earth, uh, when they are created. So my challenge to us is to consider the essence of Christmas. It's not about the commerce. It is about him who died and rose again, who gave life to all, and who opens his hands to all any time, any day, to call upon him for whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, even now and even tomorrow. And even as long as one lives, Jesus is there 
to help us, to save us, to keep us saved, and to give us eternal life with God. And you know, God is in control, whatever the challenges are. It brings you joy at this season. It brings you hope. It brings you peace. He is the Prince of Peace, and he is the one who calls the shots. Will you allow him? May the Lord bless us all as we celebrate this season together. In Jesus' name, amen. This is a Christmas poem. If you look for me at Christmas, you won't need a special star. I'm no longer just in Bethlehem. I'm right there where you are. You may not be aware of me amid the celebrations. You have to look beyond the shops and all their decorations. But if you take a moment from your list of things to do and sit and listen to your heart, you'll find I'm there waiting for you. You're the one I want to be with. You're the reason why I came. You look for me in the stillness as I whisper your name. service is over and I trust that what you've sung tonight, what you've heard tonight uh, has struck a uh, chord in your hearts. The Christmas prayer. May you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the Magi, and the peace of the Christ child. Let's say the grace together. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Amen. Our service is over, but before we go, can we
we clap our knees on those words. Thank you. We know we can do it for the glory of the, uh, uh, the Lord, but it's good to be encouraged too. Thank you all. Thank you, guys at the back. Thanks. Uh, please join us for uh, tea and lemon pies at the back. Thank you. God bless.